In this short tutorial, we're going to take a look at two ways to export a forest pack object to Unreal. First by exporting the geometry, and second by exporting only the position and the transform information so that you can swap it for some more games ready models in Unreal. In either case, you'll need the Datasmith plugins for 3ds Max. You can get them from the Unreal website and the address will be in the description. Make sure that you download the installer for the version of Unreal that you're planning to use. So first up, we're going to look at a straightforward export that includes the geometry. To do this, just select the forest pack objects you wish to transfer to Unreal. Personally, although it is possible, I don't think it's a good idea to try to export the whole scene in one go. I prefer to export the scene in chunks. It makes it much easier to identify any errors and update the Unreal version should the max file change. Here, to demonstrate, I'm just going to export the stump models. So we'll select the forest object and then go to File, Export, Export Selected. Choose a file name and change the file type to Datasmith. In the Datasmith Export options, make sure that Include is set to Selection. And then click Export. And wait a while. Depending on the number of instances and the complexity of the source geometry, this can take anything from a few seconds to a few minutes. But once it's done, all you need to do is switch over to Unreal and then click on the Datasmith button. Select the file you just exported from 3ds Max and click Open. Choose the folder in which you wish to save the forest objects you're importing. If you don't have one, create a new one and then click OK. Next, the import options will open. I disable lights, cameras and animation since we aren't importing any of those. You may also wish to disable generate light map UVs from the advanced settings if you have no plans to use baked static lighting or you're using ray tracing. This can just speed up import a little bit, otherwise just leave it enabled. And then click import. After a little while, your forest scatter will appear in the scene, complete with the original geometry and materials, assuming the materials can be converted, and for that you just need to be aware of what Datasmith supports when exporting. Now let's select the forest items that we've just imported. If we examine this, we can see that Datasmith's created one hierarchical static mesh component for each of the source objects. This is a very efficient way of creating thousands of instances in real time. If you click on one of these, you can see the static mesh being used, as well as a list of the individual instances. From here, you can also swap the geometry if you like by selecting another static mesh from the content browser and clicking the Use Selected Assets button. So this all works great, but I just wanted to share a word of warning about clicking this hierarchical static mesh actor component because the UI, as you can see, builds a list of all the instances and more than a few thousand can seriously slow it down or even crash Unreal. This has nothing to do with displaying them in the viewports. Unreal can do that without breaking a sweat. It's purely to do with the fact that it's listing them in the UI. In a future tutorial, we will share a way of accessing the information using blueprints so that you can easily make changes without needing to click on this item. But for now, we'll demonstrate another technique as well as how to import just the transform information from 3ds Max. So let's go back to Max, and I'm going to take the fern scatter this time. I'm going to find the source assets that this forest object uses, and add a Datasmith attribute modifier to each one. Change the Export Geometry As option to Bounding Box. When this is active, a simple box is exported in place of the original geometry, allowing you to swap it for something much more optimised in Unreal. As you can imagine, if you had a very large number of source objects, adding all these modifiers could be a tedious task. So we've written a script to automate this process. It's a part of the Forest Toolbox, which is an ever-evolving set of handy functions that registered users can download from our forum. You'll find the link to this in the video description. Using this, all you need to do is select one or more forest objects, and in the Datasmith section, change the mode to Bounding Box and click Add Modifier. All the relevant assets are updated. It's a really handy time saver. So now we can export it in exactly the same way as I demonstrated earlier. And once that's done, import it into Unreal in the same way too. As you can see, and as you'd expect, we have just boxes. So how do we swap them? Well, if the items count is in the early thousands, you can simply swap them in the hierarchical static mesh component, in the same way as we demonstrated earlier. However, if it's more than that, here's a workaround that won't grind the UI to a halt. So in the content browser, find the folder containing the placeholder assets that you just imported. Then open another content browser, 
and locate the object you'd like to substitute. Drag the new plant into the same folder as the placeholder. Make sure you choose copy. This is so that you don't accidentally end up deleting items from the content browser that you might need later on. Now select the new mesh and the placeholder mesh. Right click and go to asset actions. And then from that sub menu, find replace references and click. A dialog opens. From this list, you need to select the asset that you wish to keep. The unselected assets will be removed and the references to it swapped to the new selected asset. Click consolidate assets and the scatter will update in the scene. Using this technique, you can easily swap any geometry imported from Forest Pack. Let's try the same thing with another object. And let's try the third object. And if you wanted to further swap one of these ferns for another completely different model, you can simply go through the same process. We hope you find this mini tutorial useful. Look out for more videos on using Forest Pack and Rail Clone with Unreal and Unity coming soon. Forest Pack 7 is available now. Find out more about it on the i2Software website. <laughs>